YouTube, it's me, Jonathan, here again at the High Shot. Hey, we're coming with you with part three of this uh, trailer review, man. We out here in uh, Hidalgo, Texas, man, at the lovely, lovely Holiday Inn Express, taking in some of the scenery, just beauty, off the side of the back of the hotel, through the last part of this, uh, this review. And while I'm still very pleased, yep. Got a little something on here, you guys. Pretty old sweeper. Doesn't work the best, but hey. Somebody wanted it. I don't know if they're gonna refurbish it and put it back in action or what. But yeah, let's get to back to this trailer, man. No on the pry, you see it. Ram. All right. I like this coupler. It's very large. Um, I'm not sure the exact diameter of it. It does have a through pin, which I really like. Through pin, through pin, through pin. Oh, never leave home without it, you guys. Sometimes you have to unhook, go places, never leave home without that. 12 inch I beam. A lot of traders use a 10 inch I beam. This is a 12. And for those that use a 12, we're gonna go and just talk about this part. The flange. That is a five inch flange. Go check your beam. Go check your beam. I know my other trailer didn't have a five inch flange on it. A little more weight. I think it's worth it. Gusted it, gusted it. I think they know what they're doing with these wells, man. I just, I, I, I ain't no. I'm not a welder, but I know they say stack of dimes. That, that's 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 that looks pretty good. Oh yeah, came with the trailer, fire extinguisher, and triangles. Yeah, so you pull out, you're legal. This is innovative. Excuse the toolbox, because I just threw the stuff back in here. But this never saw that before on a trailer, but I know I'm pretty sure other guys have stuff that catches or they got hydraulics that they have to force down and have a handful where you can just pick up and bump it. Just it. Drop it. And yes, it is that. I'm going to drop a couple pictures right there. Drop a couple pictures right there. Uh, some loads that were moved on yesterday. We were part of a contract job to move a warehouse, you guys. And this trailer performed. Flawlessly and beyond what I thought it was able to even do. I'm going to drop a picture right there. In this position right here on the trailer. Oh, one, one pallet. Right there on the corner. Check out the knee bracing now. One corner, one pallet, 2,700 pounds right there. Um, Gator makes their trailers with state pockets and rub rails that alternate every two feet. So every foot you got one or the other. A state pocket. 12 inch, you got a chain spool. Another 12 inch, you got a stake pocket. Another 12 inch, you got a chain spool. Another 12 inches, you got a stake pocket, and so on. This is good because load securement and the placement of the load can dictate which one of the two you may be able to use to be more advantageous for holding the load. Once again, 17.5. 
17.5. And this is something no one really talks about, but these wheels are hub centric, which means the lug nuts are only responsible, and huge lug nuts they are. Uh, I think they're an inch and an eighth. These huge lug nuts are only responsible for holding the tire on the trailer. They do not, I repeat, they do not support the weight of the load as your average wheel would be mounted with the lugs supporting the weight. That's why the lug is made in the acorn shape. So it'll fit in the hole, take up the gap, and support the weight on the lugs. This is very critical. There's nothing wrong with that. I have 7K axles that do that, and they do that without a problem, but you have to be aware of that sometimes lug nuts loosen. You must check them. Well, you gotta check them here, but one thing about it, the weight is not on that lug. The weight is on the hub. That's why that wheel rides the hub. If there's a gap, in between the wheel hub and the actual center bore of the wheel, it is not a hub centric wheel. Therefore, the lugs will be carrying the weight. In this case, the hub itself, which has the bearing and everything that is meant to carry that, has a solid connection with the hub. So all the weight is concentrated, as it should be, off the lug nuts and on the hub. I'm gonna explain this. Right, that's 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 a piece of timber. I carry it with me for stuff like this. Now, a good question would be, why didn't you just lower it to the deck and strap it down? It would have been secure. This is true. But if you see, this is a sweeper. And truth be told, I could have compacted it. I could have sat it down on the deck, pressed the hydraulics down, then got two straps as I did to go across the top of it and, and, and squeezed it down. It would have been secure. But one, I don't want to risk damaging the sweeper. I don't want to just damage the, the bristles because some of them are stainless steel and they are, you know, what they are. They're delicate. So I'm, I'm not going to squeeze down on those and possibly deform and make a flat side on the sweeper. So this is where it comes in, where you gotta be a professional out here. You gotta use your head. It's not all about strap and go. But when you think about it, what I just did right there, I made a solid point of contact between there and the deck. And I got as close as I could to the cross member of the trailer in order for it not to push down through the wood. By doing this and strapping two straps across the top of it, which is kind of overkill, but it keeps it from swiveling because it thing swivels too. So, and yes, we are inside the rail rail, but yes, it swivels too. So when you do stuff like this, like I said, you got to use your head, man. This thing doesn't have suspension. You see that tire? It looks low. That tire isn't low. It's just how hard I'm squeezing it to the deck. That tire, <laughs> when I left, and that tire too. They tires might be a little, little just underinflated, but they're not low. They've been squeezed. And yeah, peek that out. Yeah, you don't want your chains rubbing together. All that securement. This is securement. Securement. But back to the trailer. Under frame knee bracing. Under frame knee bracing. It's, it, it's one of those things that you don't see a lot of because people are trying to save weight, but that's necessary. Oh yeah, standard D-rings. These things are everywhere. D-rings? We got D-rings. Hold on a sec. Got D-rings. D-rings all over the place. Trailer, had, trailer came with four standard. Uh, the ramps, Whoa, bang, 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 clank, 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 going up there. We'll show you a video of us loading something the other day.
I think that's very innovative. Let's see. Double spring assisted, not just one direction. Double spring assisted. So you're not gonna wear your back out. You're not gonna nearly kill yourself. Spring assist, double hinges. Yeah, double acting hinges. Fully welded cleats. Fully welded cleats. And these are not small. And these are not thin, y'all. They put some metal on this trailer. Fully welded, not tacked like most, most trailers you see, they're tacked. Even the small ones on the ramp. It's not small stuff, man. We've been loading equipment with it. Fully welded, fully welded, fully welded. No tax. I didn't see anything on this trailer that was tag welded. Not at all. Like I would say, small detail. Like I said, the safety light. Spot light, you know, signal lights, hazard lights. Sixteen ply tire, sixteen ply, hundred twenty psi, sixteen ply. Winch plate, built-in winch plate, and they were smart enough to drill the hole. They were smart enough to go ahead and put a hole for your wires to go down in your toolbox where they know you're gonna put a battery. Whoa, space age, wow. I'm just saying though, y'all. Yep, yep. Love the wiring, did some investigation on the wiring. I love the connectors that they use. Yep, that safety step, it is nice. It is nice, it is safe, it has two grab handles, you know what I'm saying, and it is nice. And yes, it is supported. It is supported, it's just not hanging out there. There's not anything flimsy about this trailer at all. I must say that. Uh, back to that picture with the, with the pallet. Oh man, I got a messy screenshot. That boom. I got a mess. hey man, I want pallet weighs. 2,700 pounds. Okay, it's on the corner. I see why the trailer is a little bit one-sided, but at the same time, she's going. She's got it. Get everything back like it's supposed to be. Gator. Yep. That is good. Um, like I say, Pre-install, pre-install mounts for buyer boxes, dryer boxes, uh, toolbox. Oh, the rail. Let's talk about the rail. The rail. From end to end, you put your slide in tracks in there. We get your four inch, get your four inch, uh, four inch straps and everything. And hey, you're ready for takeoff. And it goes all the way down, one in between the wheels where you can have one mounted up there and uh, all the way to the tail. This trailer is rated. It is rated at 16,000. So I'm gonna find it here on the tag. Mm. Sixteen thousand. Combine that with any one of my trucks, you had twenty six or less. Any truck I got. Next video, we're gonna talk about. You know what I'm saying? Why?
handling really good business. Building relationships is so important. And while I'm down here doing my first reset on the road due to a contract job that I got for every single truck in my company to move a warehouse. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about it. It's a nice place. Hey, it's kind of glory. We'll see y'all next week. Next Sunday, we'll get y'all. But uh, this week, we had to lay over and do some stuff that uh, boss men do. And that lead by example. I can't have all these trucks down here with my name on it. And I'm not here. It's one thing to talk about how special you are and what makes you special and your money and all that type of stuff. But we're talking about fleet building, y'all. We ain't talking about that, that, that uh, let's learn more about me and what I do. Yeah, you're going to learn more about me and what I do. But this is fleet building, y'all. That's what this part of the stuff about. So we ain't going to get sidetracked and go into all the personal stuff and all that stuff about, you know, yourself and all that because I'm gonna tell you one thing one of the biggest things you're gonna come to realize when it's when it's all said and done in your hot shot business especially if you operating the fleet you managing drivers you managing trucks one thing you're gonna realize it ain't about you doc it ain't nobody about you it's not about you it's about everybody future that you hold in your hands so yeah when I say I'm the last to get paid I might not get paid, but get what it coming, but at the same time, I got people to worry about, things to worry about. People got lives, they got families, I gotta get these people their money, in order and on time. All that other stuff, <laughs> you gonna be in a small little bracket by yourself for a long time. And you gonna make money, but at the same time, you gonna wonder why you can't expand. I keep telling you, your network gonna determine your network. And I ain't talking about on YouTube and Facebook and none of that stuff. It's people you know in real life that you can sit down and look in their eyes and tell them, hey, we'll be there. And this has been Hot Shot Haven, man. Y'all stay, stay tuned, man, for the next video coming up. We're going to talk about some contract work. And, and, and we ain't going to even talk about it like it's a direct customer and all that. I'm talking about building co-ops and, and linking stuff up. Boy, it's a conglomeration. It's to the point where this stuff ain't to be played with man nationwide nationwide this stuff gonna link up nationwide because of the relationships i'm out man we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh hit y'all up with a little more footage uh when we when we get to talking about this contract work man and show y'all how to really grow a fleet and have a reason to do it see that's the thing about it ain't no need to put a fleet together and you ain't doing shit. hey it is what it is. All this stuff got to come together from 360 degrees, not just your perspective. You know? But till next time, it's been a hot shot. Hey, Jonathan, I'm signing off. Y'all be blessed, man. And keep them wheels turned the right side down and get into that money.